guys, what's up? Welcome back to our third and final part in our series on economic applications of stochastic dynamic programming. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about another cake eating problem, which is eating cake with uncertain time preferences. Let's go. Suppose we have a consumer that hasn't quite figured out what they want to do with their lives. This is a little bit of a uh, dramatic sort of example, but we just want to go and say that they're not quite sure how they value future consumption, how they value the future and what actions uh, they can take today, uh, you know, with reference to uh, that real value that they have for the future. So they're not sure about what's what they really want, uh, you know, looking down the road. Uh, Martin Weitzman actually goes and he talks about this often with regards to how people view the problem of climate change. Uh, I should recommend that you guys go and listen to one of his talks. Uh, in the same feel of the original cake eating problem, our problem here can be mathematically written as the following. Uh, this is, you know, an expected, uh, this is an expected value pro problem where we have theta instead of, you know, what you have beta is to the power of t. And theta over here is a random, it's a random variable that is not iid. So there's some, you know, there's some process that's going on. The reason why it's not IID, uh, because if it was, um, then we'd have this, you know, just go to zero and that wouldn't be a very interesting problem. Uh, you know, instantaneous utility function is going to be logged and we have this, uh, you know, rule for allocating, uh, you know, the cake over here. It's divided up to, you know, the cake that you save for later and your consumption. So the way we're going to go and solve this problem is the guess and verify method. Uh, I've shown these, these slides, you know, the past two videos. Uh, we're just going to follow this procedure over here. Um, and again, we're going to be carrying around two terms in our Bellman instead of just one. So step number one, we're just going to set up our Bellman equation. So the first part here looks like a, you know, our standard problem here. But our second part, right, right, we're gonna go and have our, you know, discounting term, right? It's gonna be inside. It's gonna be inside uh, the expectation, right? That's just, you know, how the pro, the, you know, structure of the problem is gonna be. Uh, step number two is that we're gonna take a guess for what v k theta t is and use that for our Bellman. Uh, again, you know, we're just gonna follow, you know, the structure of our preferences. Uh, to go and inform, uh, you know, what we have here. So our structures are, you know, they're logged and our other part are, you know, our, you know, if we were to take the natural log of KT, that's just, you know, that's log KT. We don't have any theta over here because that doesn't go and enter into our, you know, initial production function or in here, the initial cake size. Uh, summing this into for our future value function, we go and we get the following over here. Step number three is that we're gonna take our first order conditions and solve for it. So note that C2 is to be a constant and KT plus one is a certain value, meaning that there's no uncertainty regarding, you know, this, the cake that you go and you save. So um, I think this is, this is, you know, a point of uh, confusion about how I'm able to go and pull this expectation operator through there and just have it on theta t plus one. And uh, that's just because uh, we would go and that, that's just because, you know, we have two certain terms over here. Um, I think it could be said, you know, just in general uh, for a value function, right? As, and I could have done that uh, just in the structure of a value function where you're just gonna go and pull it out. So your discounting term would be the expectation of theta t plus one. But in any case, we go and we follow this procedure over here and we have this nice picture uh, down at the bottom. So step number four is that we're going to set our initial guess equal to our Bellman evaluated at this maximum, right? This is an intermediate maximum uh, KT plus one tilde. Um, I'm just going and having this mathematics over here, right? Where you just go and plug it in and we work the algebra. Again, uh, one of the things that you should go and see is that how we're pulling, you know, how we're passing, you know, variables through uh, this expectation operator to come out on the other side uh, when we go and we have constant terms uh, over here. And the ones that are going to be, you know, not impacted are 
those sort of terms and the ones that are remaining are you know these random terms over here um here you know i've just put down you know for our final answer for estimating our coefficients i put in this term a that just means that this is all the terms that are not attached to ln kt that's for our c1 and for our c2 which is our most important uh, term because that's in our you know theoretical maximum uh or our theoretical policy function uh th that's going to be one plus the expectation of theta t plus one times c2 that's going to be our c2 step number five is that we're going to go and identify the coefficients from our initial guess uh so just you know setting this equal to c2 is equal to one plus the expectation of theta t plus one c2 and that just gives us this nice answer over here which is one all over one minus the expectation of theta one plus one or th theta t plus one sorry about that um so we have uh this equation over here and it's very similar to our uh our coefficient for our cake eating problem with certainty where you would usually see just you know a constant term beta it has the same sort of structure just that here uh we have uncertainty about this rate over here but you know structurally it's just very 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 similar so step number six is that we're going to use our coefficients to identify our policy functions from uh, kt plus one right tilde right this theoretical maximum and we're just going to you know run the algebra and we see that we go and we get our policy functions that again they look very similar to our you know deterministic case of our standard taking problem just that instead of beta we just go and we have this expectation of theta t plus one meaning this uncertain future discount term so uh for this last slide here uh, i just wanted to go and uh show you guys i actually posted this uh you know on my page uh, shortly before uh you know releasing the content but what we have uh, here is, you know, just a comparison of, you know, what this uncertain, you know, policy uh, functions go and look like. Um, and, you know, this is just done in Excel uh, clearly. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just putting this in here. And what's interesting for me is that you end up going and seeing like, you know, these curvy, 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 uh, you know, consumption policy functions over here that look, you know, very, 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 very strange. And, um, you know, even though I haven't really spoken about it uh, in the context of our, uh, you know, value functions, as in we can still see that if you have an uncertain discount factor, right, you can still have a uh, contraction mapping there. You can still have that sort of stuff. I mean, it could be that, uh, you know, it would be a contraction mapping in any case because, you know, the theta t plus one is going to be the same in each period. But this is just, you know, something I was playing with. It's just, you know, to show that we can go and get some wiggles out of these consumption policies uh, with uncertain preferences. And I think, you know, that might, you know, be play uh, a more of a behavioral sort of picture uh, that, you know, would make, you know, the behavioral economists happy. So that's the video on uh, our cake eating problem with uncertainty regarding the future. I hope this video helps. I hope it's insightful. Take care.